Good morning. Welcome to this Friday edition of Devotions with Pastor Paul. So glad you are with me wherever you are, however you're joining me. Um, glad that we could have this time together. It's always, always, always um, a pleasure to have these couple of moments together. Hey, want to remind you, Sunday night is worship night. Come on, guys, let's fill that place with worship and joy and uh, singing. Uh, we're going to have time for you to share some of uh, the things that God has been doing in your life during uh, this 21 days of fasting, or maybe it's even just a, a greater thing than that. And there are lots of things that are going on. We want you to come and and uh, be with us, and and it, it's, it's going to be fantastic. We're going to worship and uh, just lift up the name of Jesus together. So I hope you'll you'll rearrange everything and be with us on Sunday. And then don't forget, um, our sign up is really low. Uh, so, and we always seem to have this problem here at Shoreline. Everybody goes slow, slow, last minute. Um, if we wait till the last minute, Lori and I are going to cancel foundations. So if you're planning on being foundations and you should, okay. Um, the first part of it is our membership requirement for Shoreline Community Church. So if you're looking to become a member, that first uh, 101 is is how you do that. Um, and then if you choose to follow us, that would be awesome. But um, uh, 101, 201, 301, 401, 16 weeks, but it is um, life-changing. So the sign-up, there's a sign-up outside of the sanctuary. Uh, you can sign up you know, that way or... There's a sign-up also um, available in this email if you're getting this by email. And if you aren't getting this by email, um, something's wrong. So you should tell us about that and uh, we'll get you on our email list. But either way, uh, would love to love to have you um, be part of our Foundations class. And that starts next Thursday at 7 p.m. Trust me, you can go and ask the people who did it last time. It is fantastic and uh we, we have a great time we enjoy one another but at the same time we really dig into some really key principles of uh the faith okay today's topic um and at first hang with me because you might hear the title and go oh this isn't about me it is about you okay i want to talk to you about the responsibility of leadership okay now before you click off all of us are leaders you're a leader somewhere you're you're a husband, you're a, you know, you're a mother, you're a wife, you're a father, you're an aunt, you're an uncle, you're a grandparent, you are um, a manager, you have people that report to you. Somewhere, you have people that look up to or follow you. Now, some of us, uh, there, there's a great, there's a great uh, quote that says this, um, some of us think we're leading people that aren't following. Uh, there's some people who are just positive they're leaders in the church and absolutely nobody wants anything to do with them and they're not following them, right? And they're like, oh man, I'm a great leader in the church. And everybody's like, no, you're not because nobody's following you. Um, that's another story for another day. But all of us have, have some form of responsibility, which means that we're leaders. And so all of us have, every single one of us has at least a measure of, a measure of leadership responsibility. So whether it's your family, a group of friends, your work, um, the community here in our church at Shoreline Community Church, somewhere God has given you some, some form of responsibility. And as I've been studying through the book of Jeremiah, I came... It came to a, a section, chapters 21 through 24, that are just brutal. They're brutal. They're not chronological. Jeremiah has taken some, some different parts of what is happening in, in uh, Judah, and he's mashed them together because there's a lesson to be learned in these, in these chapters here. And the lesson is this. The lesson is that there were those that had ascended to places of leadership. They were kings, priests, and prophets that um, that uh, Jeremiah addresses in these chapters. Kings, priests, prophets. And they had misused their place of leadership. 
They had misused their place of responsibility. They had misused their place that they had been put in of authority. And some of them were put in a place of authority, not um, necessarily because they should have been there, but they were placed in places of authority because um, King Nebuchadnezzar said, hey, this is going to be someone who's going to be better than the last person. He'll he'll obey me. He'll submit. I won't have a problem with him. So he puts him in place of leadership. Then there's other people. Now listen, there are other people who designate themselves as leaders. These were false prophets. They were going around saying, oh, the Lord said, the Lord gave me a dream. The Lord said to me, the Lord such and such and so and so. But their lives didn't match up. And God says, I never spoke to you. I never talked to you. I never gave you a vision. I never gave you a prophecy. And you're speaking lies to the people of Israel. You're speaking lies to the people of Judah. And then you have these priests. They were supposed to be men of God. They were supposed to lead Israel in the ways of the Lord. And Jeremiah prophesies, and God through Jeremiah says, you're committing adultery right in the temple. Now, what do you mean by that? Were they literally committing adultery? Probably, perhaps, but even if they weren't, they were worshiping other idols, for sure. It says you're, you're committing adultery, and you are misleading the people. You're not doing the job that you were called, set apart, destined, born to do. So I want to read to you from, from chapter 21. And this is, this is what God expects of us as leaders. Every single one of us. You have a place, a position of authority. My hand's really big there. Place a position of authority, of some kind of power, of some kind of authority. Somewhere you are that person. And this is what the Lord says to the dynasty of David. Chapter 21. I'm reading from the 12th verse. And watch this. Give justice to the people you judge. Help those who have been robbed. Rescue them from their oppressors. Do what is right, or my anger will burn like an unquenchable fire because of all your sins. Wow. I just want to key in on one part of that. Do what is right. At the end of the day, that's really what it comes down to for all of us. Leaders, followers, priests, kings, prophets, regular Joe going about doing his business, whatever it may be, all of us have just this simple, simple thing. Do what is right. Now, what had happened was the kings had set themselves up and they were building themselves these great homes for themselves, these palaces for themselves, all at the expense of the people that they were supposed to be leading and they were in a position listen leadership is a position of service it's not a position of i get what i want and i and i i my needs are met and my ego is fed and and that's not that's not what leadership is leadership is a position to do what is right to serve the poor to help the oppressed to bless those who are not in a position to take care of themselves that's ultimately what God requires of us. Ma uh, oh, forget the... Uh, I, Micah, excuse me, says this. It says, what does the Lord require of you, O man? Love mercy. Do justice. Walk humbly with your God. Okay, I'm running out of time here, so let me jump into this. Here's what, here's what God says in chapter 23. He talks about those in leadership that have not obeyed God's command and not done what is right. And it says this, they have destroyed and scattered the very ones they were expected to care for. They destroyed and scattered those that they were expected to care for. Now here's what he's saying. I got to move real fast here. He's saying you were the ones that were supposed to lead the people of Israel back to repentance and I wouldn't have had to exile them. Now, I have to intervene. I have to scatter them for their good. If you go into chapter 24, it talks about the fact that this is for their good because ultimately it brings them back to God. That God had to bring pain, suffering, and destruction on Israel and Judah in order to bring them back to him. That there was ultimately 
good. But it could have been avoided if the very leaders, those that were in leadership position, those that had authority, those that had power, had done the very things they were supposed to do. Church, no matter where your position is, no matter what God has placed you in, can I just implore you today, do what's right, not what's comfortable, not what's expedient, and not what serves just you best. Wherever God has planted, placed, set you, do what is right. And God will bless that. And he will use you. And he will bless you as a result. It's a good lesson there. The uh, importance of authority, of power, position, of leadership. Thank you, Lord, for these few moments we've had together. I pray that you would bless your people today. Pray wherever they are and in this fast or, or even if they're not fasting, God, just, just speak to their hearts. Bless them. I pray that you would help us to set aside our comforts and our, our wants and our desires and that we would do what's right and thereby honor you and honor the gifts that you've given to us. I pray all this in the name of Jesus for your glory. Amen. Amen. Sorry I've gone over. We love you. Have a blessed, blessed day. And I will see you Saturday tomorrow.